on this part of the dashboard so what we're gonna try to build right now let me give you a full screen so now what we have right here is um is a transactional analysis where we try to delve into how our goods are being shipped to the end users so we can see the shipping status the delivery status right here and the sales channel so now this is not really gonna be something that we will have already existing 100 in our data so we have to go ahead and start to some kind of you know uh get data shipped inside power query if i take you right here to the power query environment right now or before then I'm gonna take you down to the data itself that we have before we visit the park area. Now we have this audit and we have the ship date and we have the delivery date. What we want to see is this, you know, the interval between this date and the interval between this uh, ship and delivery date right here. So how do we get that? So all you have to do is to go to Power Query. You know, already we have some kind of uh, gotten our data inside Power Query. If you watch the first videos, you will definitely understand what I'm talking about. So now you have this particular, you know, transform uh, data right here. Once you click on it, it's going to take you right to this particular part here. Okay, now we have the same dates we've just seen. I'm going to scroll this in. Here we go. We have those three dates right here. Order date, ship date, and delivery date. So we have to some kind of transform it to what we want. Okay, the first thing we're going to do right now, uh, we'll definitely go to add columns. And this time around, I'm just going to go ahead and add what I call custom column. So click on the custom column and let's see what is going to happen. So just give it some time. So on the custom column, we want to see the order versus the shipping interval. So I'm going to type here order vs interval. So something like this. So that is the column name. So what are we going to do right here? You can see right here where we have our equal to right in this is where we have to impute the formula. So right now I'm going to say ship date. Right now, you can see we have it right here. You can either double click on it or you click on it and actually go ahead and insert it. We want to subtract that from the order date. Here is the order date. Okay, let me explain further what I meant by this. Like the ship date was this. Uh, the day that the goods that the customer ordered for was being, you know, shipped. And the order date was the day that the, you know, customer ordered the product or the goods. So now we want to know how many days before we definitely shipped this to the customer. That is what we're trying to do right here. Quickly, I want to go right here and click on OK and let's see what we have. So the number we have might look a little bit weird, but don't worry. Uh, we can some kind of format it. So all you have to do is just click right here and some kind of go to this particular whole number. And now what you can see, this is what it is. You can see 14, 22 days and 21 days. You might not really get the full understanding of what is going on right here right now until we get to where we have to, you know, visualize this. We've gotten the first part of it. Next again is for we to click right to this particular custom column. So on this one, what we're trying to do right now is just go right here and we want to type in here our shipping versus delivery date. So delivery interval. So we want to come right here and let's see what we need. So So uh, all we just did right here was to say delivery a date uh, subtracted from the ship date, right? Like the day we deliver the goods and the day the goods was shipped. So we want another interval. So I'm just going to click on my OK right here. I'm going to have this then quickly click right here and go with the whole number. And what you're going to see is this. That is the first step you need to take. And one thing I love about, you know, Power BI is that you can time travel. As I always, you know, said, uh, you can actually, you know, go back to the previous one before we turn it around. And then you can see, you can go through how the data got, you know, formed to this end and see if you want to make any amendment. If you really want to make amendment on this one right now, let's say you made a mistake. All you have to do is to click on this particular settings icon right here. And it's going to take you back to this particular part 
that and you can actually make the changes right from here it's very simple and easy so i'm going to cancel because i don't want to make any changes right so it's time for me to go into the next phase of this Right, let us jump into the next step. The next step, um, I'm gonna go ahead and use the conditional column right here. So you can see where we have conditional column. Just go ahead and click on it and let's, you know, get into it. Okay, now under the conditional column, I'm gonna type in here uh, delivery status so i'm gonna have the delivery status uh, you know typed in here and uh, here it says if this column right here so what column do we want to refer to we have a column that is named as you know shipping versus delivery we just have to look for that this is what it is shipping versus delivery interval so once we actually click on that so we want to see if it is less than or equal to can you see that if it is less than or equal to three get it i just want to give you the idea of what you need to do you might have a different data from what i have right here right now so which means what you'll be getting like, like you can practice with this but in, in the subsequent time to come you might have a different data to work with so you you have to use you know something different than less than or equal to so you can see it's less than it's greater than or equal to either of this could be used to achieve whatever you want to achieve and you can give it a number right so if it is less than or equal to three I want it to be, you know, quick delivery. Quick uh, delivery. You get it right now. Well, what I'm trying to say right now, in essence, is this: if the days is actually, you know, less than or equal to three, which is day one, two, and three, uh, the goods was some kind of shipped to the end user. That means we had quick deliveries. You can see this particular ad close. When we click on it, we want to say else if we just want to go with the same column again. So remember, we created this column ourselves, right? And right on this one, I want to still say if it is less than or equal to now any of it that's some kind of fall between six days, you know, we have to name this one to be late, late delivery. So let delivery and uh, anything outside the two specification we have right here right now we want to actually say okay now it's going to be very late delivery can you see that right now so now I just want you to understand better. I don't want to rush this. I want to keep it at a very slow pace. Then you get what I'm trying to deliver. So now we, okay, say so the shipping versus the delivery status. The day the goods was shipped from my company and the day the goods was some kind of delivered to the end users. If the day is between one, two, and three, that is within three days, that means it's a quick delivery. So if the day is between, you know, or from, you know, is less than or equal to six, that is not falling between here, but between this is going to be late delivery. But anything beyond this, like 12 days, even two weeks, 20 something days, is going to be under late delivery. So you can actually specify or based on what your boss really wants to have some kind of, you know, break this down by. So I'm going to click on my OK right here and this is what i'm gonna have you can see now very late delivery it falls on the 10th the 10th okay let's go ahead and filter this and see what we have i'm gonna filter very late delivery so now can you see what it falls to right now it falls to you know let me just open this place up so it falls under from seven eight nine and ten let us open if we have more of it now can you see this right now okay if i go back right here right now and say okay i want to filter it by you know um let quick delivery here i'm gonna click on okay let's see where it falls to our quick delivery is going to be from one two three days any goods that has some kind of delivered from the first day second and the third day will be quick delivery i believe this would give you the holistic of where everything we are trying to achieve right here so now that is that so we have to add another conditional column again so click on it so here we go with our shipping status i'm gonna say shipping status so we have to go to the column we've created for this so if i have this opened up right now you can see where we have order um that is shipping and delivery interval 
Okay. Well, we have order interval right here. Um, I'm coming. Let me just see something. What we have. Okay. Yeah, we have order interval. So we made a mistake on this one. We have to correct that. I'm going to have to say cancel for now. Let's just rename this particular part right here. To rename it now, I can double click on it and have it active. So order versus shipping. This should be shipping. Interval. I'm going to hit my enter key. Now I have it renamed. So it add a new step for us. That is cool. It's not bad. So now we can go ahead and do what we are, you know, about to. So I'm going to click right here. And quickly we can go ahead and type in shipping status. Shipping status. So now we have to choose what column do we want to base this right on. And you know what the column should be. So just go right here. And now here we go. We have this column order versus shipping interval. So we've actually clicked on that. So and now we want to say where it is less than or equal to just like previously what we've used. And uh, this time around, I want to use the 12 day, right? So it's going to be LS shipping. So early shipping. So any of our shipping that is actually within first to 12 days uh, is going to be early shipping. And quickly, I'm going to add another one. And right now we have to choose the same, you know, column for it. So we just want to see where it is less than or equal to as well. And this time around is going to be within 20 days. So if it delays and get shipped within 20 days, that is going to be uh, late shipping okay the last but not least is this one right here if it doesn't fall between this category and it's above 20 days like 21 days and above i want to be some kind of a very late delivery so very late delivery and quickly i'm gonna go ahead and add this up so just do the same thing you're gonna see what i'm talking about Okay, you might want to try to see if this is correct. So remember, we are dealing with this particular column. Those two columns right here. This is the column that actually created what we have right here right now. If I go ahead and filter this by very late delivery, we should we should see something above 20. So now let's see what we have right from here. Can you see it? This is the column. And if I go ahead and open it up, we have from 21 down to 28. So if it doesn't fall between 21 and above, that means it's wrong. So you can really make your research to see what is it that you've done and how this is some kind of really cool. Okay, this is everything we need to do from the back end on the, you know, parkway right here. After we have done with this, go to home and close and apply. That is all we have to do. So now it is time for we to prepare our dashboard. And uh, you know what it is? We have to quickly go to Power um, PowerPoint right here and check the template we're gonna use, and we have to build that from the scratch. As you can see, I prefer creating my you know, template to be used for my dashboard or report in PowerPoint. So now to get this kind of design, we want to go to PowerPoint. And here is the previous one with some kind of created and more of it, right? I'm going to show you how to do every single thing we have right here from the scratch. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and control N. And what that does is to help me insert a blank one for me. And if you don't know what I've done, quickly go to file. So click on the ribbon and once you're on the ribbon, so you are going to see this file right here. Click on file and quickly you are going to see a blank presentation. Just go ahead and click on that and you're going to have the same thing just like this. So leave the height and the weight the way it is and get this off quickly. That is beautiful. Okay. So we're going to leave the background on white and quickly go to the ribbon top and go ahead and pick this up, drag it down and let us change the height and the weight for we to be on the same page. I don't want to resize this and you'll be like, I didn't get what you've actually gotten exactly. So I'm going to go right here and right on this particular part. Let's see what we're going to have. I'm going to go, you know, 7. 0.12 by what? It's going to be 7.12 by 12.79. 
to seven nine and this is what we're gonna have right can you see okay what is next for us right now is to some kind of you know adjust circle a little bit and have something just like this and you want to make sure you centralize it and when it is centralized you can see this particular red you know cross around it that says okay now this is fitted right release it and now we have to change the color and remove the border color from it so changing the color is easy right click and you can see where we have the format shape right here and quickly we go to line i want to turn up the line i don't want that so i'll go to fill and open right here if the color you're looking for to actually you know add into it is not really what is here what you can do is to go ahead and customize the color come to these more colors and here you have those you know uh, rgb right here that you can actually change and get your desired color but right on this particular hex code i'm going to change it to something like this as you can see we have e sys e d f2 using the harsh Dog. and if i stop right here right now you can see this changes and it has given me the number um so the kind of color i want so if you don't have the hex code on your own version of powerpoint you can go ahead and type this one on the rgb and you're gonna have exactly the same thing so i'm gonna click on ok and let's see what we're gonna have so this is the color we have right here right now so beautiful and i want to come right here I'm gonna get this. I'm just gonna make sure I get something like this. I'm gonna have it at this particular part. Make it a bit smaller. And I wanna go ahead and change this to. I'm gonna go white, um, change this. I wanna put it on white. And I wanna take this off. And quickly, I wanna go right here and go to the shadow. Come right here and change the way it looks. I'm gonna go with something like this okay let's see so what this is going to do for us is what is going to actually you know take like uh if i go on the finished one right here let's see can you see this right now this is what we have right here so if i actually you know open this place up right now what it's going to give to me is to actually open you know a panel where we can navigate to other pages can you see this right now this is what this does and if i click on this part right here it's going to actually have it hidden for me so it's pointing out like something is right here can you click me and all of that so we can actually even do on hover you want it some kind of give you what is right inside it is optional so if you want to add that you can go ahead and do it so now we're gonna to have to leave the environment here and this is what we have for now right going to the top ribbon i want to pick this same again so we just have to drag it right here and change the height and the weight so the height is going to be 0 0.49 and we want the weight to be 6.95 like it's going to be 6.95 here we go just like this and what we can do right now is just to make sure we move it to the top right here we want to have two colors for this and our first color let's get it i want to go right and go to format ship and once we have this up we want to take off the you know outline color from it and are we gonna go with this kind of okay no i want to go with this color right here you have it so go ahead and click on it so we have this first color and the second color is gonna be in a different color entirely so we want to use pure white color right here so i want to go with this white and this is what it is that we have so i'm gonna have to make sure i place it and we can reduce it and you know we can go make it something like this this is how we've gotten this right so we have something like this just to put some text right on it right so let us pick a text box i'm gonna go right and here is my text box right here if you can't find it based on your version go to insert and from insert i think you should have this particular text box right here click on it and drag it down right here and we have to go ahead and type in something we want to have right inside it so here yeah, i just typed in transaction analysis i uh, you want to go to the top like come right here as you can see we have you know very tight tight normal lows and very lows this is what we want right i'm gonna use something like this and um, quickly what we have to do now is some kind of you know go ahead and make sure you've centralize it here you go okay now we have to make sure we take it right here and have it right in here i'm gonna double this and uh, right here i'm gonna type in dashboard 
to the dashboard, right? So what I'm going to do right now is to make sure I change the kind of font to use for this. I want to go with area black and quickly I want to have the color changed is not too dark, but something like this would be cool for me. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and have it right here. So which is beautiful, right? That is nice. So we've gotten something like this. You can play around with the color to make sure it looks very, very nice. So we are right on it. So we have this part where we have some slices right in. I want to have to create that. So what we can do is just so go right and pick this particular you know rectangle. I'm going to drag it down. I'm going to have something like this. I have one here. I'm going to double it. I'm going to have another one right here. So now we have to change the colors to them. So what we can do right now is to right click right on this format. And I'm going to take off the line come right here. I want to go with something like this. Nice cool, right? So I want this color to look more brighter than this. So we have to go ahead and create our own silicone right here. And quickly, we have to get an X code right here. And if I click right here right now, the hex code changes like for the RGB. If you don't have the hex code, go ahead and copy the RGB. And you're going to have the same thing. Now it's more brighter than usual, right? And on this one, I'm going to have to change this one to white. That is the where would i have it right so now we have something just like this that is cool so i'm gonna have to go ahead and insert another one and it's gonna be this rounded corner right here drag it down so we have to go ahead and choose the same color for it and i want to go the color of just used right now is this i'm gonna choose it and i take off the outline and now we have to deal with how the height and the width now we are we gonna be on the same page so go to the top ribbon and here we go. So we have to make it 1.67, that is the height. And the width is going to be on the 12.18. So this is what it is. So we just have to make sure it sits right here. That is it. So we've gotten this. So we're almost right there. So I'm going to copy this one just double it and i'm gonna have it this one right here for now we just have to make sure this one goes inside a little bit so we have to come and have this right here so extend it and just make it this way so just adjust the bit so i'm gonna double this into tray i want to have one right here and double on that one so if you want to have equal justification and uh, you know equal spacing for it so you have to do right now is to hold your control and select them all so go to the top level and go to format shape and align so you want to some kind of distribute horizontally and come right here and distribute vertically right so now this gives you, you know, equal space in right here and right here. And this is what you have. So I want to move this to this particular part. I love it the way it is. So now we just want to get a circle for it. So come right here. And for you to have perfect circle right now, can you see, this is not a perfect circle, but I want to leave it like this. Go back again and pick under one. And now if I hold my shift key, guess what I'm going to have? Can you see? It's not going to get distorted. I'm going to have something as perfect as this, right? And I can actually make sure I move it and have it right here and then get this off. So I'm going to go ahead and get this duplicated. Ctrl D, have this right here. Get this duplicated and here we go. So now we can change the color to it. I want to come right here, right click on it, come here and just go ahead and change this to this particular kind of color. I'm going to have to take off the line color, come right here. I'm going to change this one to this uh, color. Let's see what this one is going to look like. This one will take this color right here. And if we go back, this is what we're going to have. Okay, now we're going to set some icons right here at the end. If we go to the finished one right now, it's looking exactly like the this right we have here. So, can you see it right now? So, what is left for is for you to some kind of create this, which is very, very easy. We're going to go back to the previous one, the new one we're creating. And now I'm going to have to double this and get this one down right here. It's easy to have it created from here. Just have to some kind of drag it down. 
like this and uh, reduce the rounded corner we have for it. Can you see this right now? We we'll right click and we have to format it by changing the color to white. We go right here. I'm going to change it to white. And once we've done this, we can step off and see what it is that we have. And if I go to the top right here, I have this line and I want to just kind of use this line. Okay, come here. I'm going to connect this one to this. It's very simple for me to get a straight line. Can you see it right now? So I can now move it up and have something like this. You get it? So we can definitely some kind of go right on shape format and quickly we can change the way the color you know looks like can you see this so play around with the colors you have right here and see what it is that you want to use and i think i'm gonna prefer this can you see this right now let us go and you know navigate through this can you see we have almost similar we've just replicated what we have as a template and this is beautiful so Oh, I mean, in case you've missed where we exported this out, it's very simple and easy. Let me show you my favorite way to have it exported and get it used inside Power BI. Go to File and from File, you can see where we have Export. Click on it. And once you get here, you can see as PDF, but we don't want to do that. So we want to go ahead and see Change File Type. So click on that and you're going to see different ways to some kind of export, export this out. So we have JPG, PNG, and uh, we have another favorite one of mine, which is GIF. So double click on this uh, one here and it's going to take you to another part and this is where it's going to take you quickly open save as type and we have gif right here we can choose that if that is what we want and all of that so you can choose where you want to have this saved in and i'll write you know whatever you want to use for it and all of that and have it saved and that is all um you can pick it up from there so this is what we have to create so what this gives you is an idea of what you need to do if you want to have a custom template created in powerpoint so you might have a different project aside the practice we have done right here right now so now already you've gotten the idea of how you need to use your shape and what you can do and all of that so let's see how we can some kind of import this into powerpoint so let us see how to get the template here. So come on, uh, come and click right here and go to canvas background and quickly click on this particular browse. So it's going to take us to where we should pick it up from. And now we just have to go ahead and go to the, uh, the, the, the desktop and I'm going to go ahead and locate where it is. Uh, we just have to click and then from here, so we have all the templates we've created, you know, right here. So this is the one we are some kind of interested in. I'm going to double click it. And right now we have it here, but it's not showing up. What is the reason? That was because we have it on 100% transparency. I'm going to have to put it on zero. And there you go. You are going to have this. So you have this particular image fit right here. So we can you can check it out to see what this is like. So we can see fit and can see how it looks right on it. And we can see fill. You can see what it is. So I always love to see fit. Fit will make sure it's centralized and all of that. Depends on the kind of template you have right here. Now, this is how to import the template you've created inside Power BI for you. Okay. Um, let us understand the whole thing that is happening here for we to create something very amazing that we will be able to replicate what we've learned here in our other projects. So right now, what we're trying to do is to see how many percentage of our customers, you know, got their product shipped early and how many of the shipping uh, were some kind of earlier and the delivery and all of that so now as you can see we have this right here to have the summary of what the whole dashboard is all about and we have the breakdown of shipping status by very late early and uh, late shipping and the delivery as well and the shipping and the sales channel so it's not really pretty easy for we to drag and drop all this so we have to write some measures to help us get it calculated let us go straight up to where we're gonna get started 
Uh, before we finally get started, we have to understand something on our data area. So I'm going to go right here to the data view and I want to make sure, just make sure you click on the fact table. Can you see it right here? Here's our fact table. Click on the fact table. You're going to see this table we have right here, right now. And uh, if you are like right here, just scroll to this end where you're going to see the one we've some kind of created in Park Query, which is the delivery status and the shipping status right so we're gonna actually use this to summarize the quantity sold or uh, ordered by our customers so we want to know how many of those quantity were shipped early and with some kind of delivered early or late either of it so now that you've known what column we're going to be dealing with it will be very easy for us to some kind of get things done go back right to the visual area here now what we can do is to insert what i call a supporting table what does the what does the supporting table do it helps us some kind of group our measures just like what we've done right here when we got this created if you've not watched that video please make sure you watch the video from this crash then you now have the full understanding if you want to stay on this don't worry i'm going to show you everything that happens and all that so now the first measure here means you're going to have to come right here enter data once you click on it it's going to prompt up another one so now here you go just type what you want the measure name to be like or uh, maybe like this one now is going to be order order measure so what's going to happen is that any uh you know dax code we some kind of write we want to save it right here and all that so already you can click on load and it's going to load up straight up to this particular part right here just like what i have right now i just want you to understand that we have this and next is for which is some kind of insert a new merger to start the creation so go to home and right here you can see new measure or still you can decide to just right click and what you're gonna see is the same new measure right here so click on it and all you're gonna have right now is the measure you know a bar right here to some kind of pop out for you nicely okay we have ss early shipping and what your question would be like is what is the ss doing right here the ss stands for shipping status so I know why I did it this way because I want some kind of you know group hit. So SS means shipping status. So now I told you we're gonna be using a column that is our you know quantity column, which I believe very well that we've not some kind of create a merger for our quantity. No, no, no. We don't have to do that. We should go back, but we have another way to do it. I'm gonna create it, but let us use this particular form to have it done for the first time. So now we're going to say calculate uh, because we've not created measure that summarize the you know our quantity columns so we have to embed the sum function right in here right now so what is some function looking for is looking for the quantity so i'm going to type in my quantity right here and the quantity is this particular you know ordered quantity by our companies that buy from us or the customers so once you have this right here i'm gonna to have to close it so which means it has been summarized inside the calculate function so i'm gonna say comma so you have two ways to filter what you want to filter you can either use the filter function or just go ahead and you know omit the filter function and use comma let us use this particular you know way to do it i'm gonna show you the next way to do it right okay now i'm gonna say shipping status just like this so if you look at it the ss right here means our shipping status i'm gonna say what it is equal to early shipping so we're gonna have to close our you know calculate so now if i go ahead and hit my enter key let's see what we're gonna have so we can decide to format it by using the comma separator and once that is done i'm gonna to have to push this inside the card so let me insert the card i'm gonna to have to push it inside the card to see if this is working nicely we have 14k for l shipping okay let's do one more again so um you just have to understand what you have sitting right here because if you don't know that is where the problem is going to come from i'm going to scroll this way now we have early shipping we have late shipping and we have very okay sorry yeah 
but we should have very late shipping, not very late delivery. So it is good that we have this error. How do we fix it? Let us quickly go back and fix it. So all we have to do is to come to home and here you have transform data, click on it and it's going to take us to Power Query. So I told you we can time travel on Power Query because it records every single step for us. So now if we had kind of renamed this, it would have been better. We will know what this is for that. We don't know what it is, but we just have to verify and see what it is. So what I want to see here is this. So here we go. We have shipping status. Oh, we should have uh, shipping here. Very late shipping, but we have very late delivery. So I'm going to have to change that. So now quickly, I'm going to have to click on OK. OK, for next time, for me not to guess which one is which, what I can do right now is to come right here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to see this rename right here. I'm going to have to say shipping status. If I hit my enter right now, I'm going to come right here, right click on it. I'm going to come rename. I'm going to type in here delivery status so now if i click on delivery status now let's see what we're gonna have so we're gonna have delivery status so we know where to go and how to track how to track and how to make changes to it and all of that it's very simple and easy so we can now you know close and go back and if we look at you right now it's going to some kind of change to what we've just changed it into so it shouldn't be very late delivery, but very late shipping right now. Automatically, it has been changed for us. That is okay. So let's get back and start to get it done. So right here and right now, I'm going to have to insert a new uh, measure. So from here, we're going to say SOS very late shipping so it's gonna be equal to so i'm gonna use the same calculate function use the same sum function and uh, we just want to summarize the you know order the order of the quantity close it so previously we just add comma and we went ahead and pulled in the column we want some kind of filter from but right now i'm gonna use comma and our filter function filter and if we actually add filter right here it's going to ask us which table do you want me to go ahead and pick a column and filter it for you i'm going to say fact table that is it fact table that is nice i'm going to have my comma so it's looking for expression and expression is the column so let us go ahead and pick the column the column will be uh shipping status and here we go we have the shipping status right here and we want to say where it is equal to a uh, very late shipping right can you see that right now um you don't have to be you don't have to put you know a capitalize each word it doesn't really matter so once you're done i'm gonna hit my and okay that is the second way to get this uh this kind of filter to what you want and quickly i want to go ahead and use the comma separator for it and now we have to see if this is working i'm gonna just go ahead and have the card i'm gonna put it on card and now it works Okay, that isn't that way. Okay, next way is for me to come to my first measure right here. And um, inside the first measure, I want to right click and uh, I'm going to type, I'm going to have to go here. And I want to kind of summarize that particular column that is our order column. So I have to create a measure for total orders. So I'm going to type here. Sorry, why is that not working? total orders so i'm gonna say equal to and we have to use some function order that is quantity order right here i'm gonna close it i'm gonna hit my enter key so we can definitely try as much as we could to format it the way it should be like Okay, now that we have this, let's see what's going to happen. It's going to look very much shorter now. If we want some kind of, you know, uh, create the last uh, shipping status right here. 
now we have to create for lead shaping let's see how swift that is uh it's gonna be srs lead shaping so equal to calculate and now i'm gonna pass in the uh measure we've just created which is total you know orders right and uh, from there I'm going to put my comma. I don't need to close this right now. I'm going to use either filter or speed up. I can actually omit filter and just type in shipping status right here. So where it is equal to let shipping. So have it closed and hit your enter key. It's going to give us the same thing. Like, you know, you can see I've given you three different uh, ways to do it right now so choose the one that is perfect for you make sure you remember it and uh, make use of it anytime you want to have something some kind of filtered size let's shipping let's see if it works and beautifully it works like very smart okay now let us add the icons we have right here I'm gonna move this away down right now gonna take this one down so we have some icons right here so is a static icon this time around is not gonna be you know our animated icon so i am going to go to where okay let's just go to insert and um from insert so we can see where we have image right in so click on that image and we can navigate to our system through where we have it. So we're gonna to go to resources and uh, uh, you can see where we have static images. So here we go. So um, let's see. So let's see the icons we need. So we need icon for order, order quantity or gross revenue and gross profit. So shopping cart for order. So we have to locate where we have the shopping cart right in. And here we go. Double click it. And here we have it. So now we have them all right here. So we can quickly resize them. And we're going to have to bring it all the way right here. So you can resize it and make sure it fits right in here. That is beautiful. I'm going to come right on this. I'm going to some kind of resize it. So the smaller it is, the higher the quality you have for the image. So I'm going to resize it just to have something right here, right now. This is beautiful, right? Okay, nicely we have something just like this. So it is time for we to get the headers right on it. It's very simple and easy. All we have to do is to click on, you know, text box. I'm going to have to move this right here. So we can type in here what we want to have inside it. It's going to be my quantity ordered so we can before we can be able to some kind of do anything to it right now if i go right here and change it to like 18 nothing happens that is gonna be awkward so i'm gonna have to go ahead and you know control a have it highlighted and you can come right here and you can have it on 18 and you can see it works and you can decide to change how you want the color to look like you can decide to use something like this i'm going to centralize it and all of that so that is beautiful so we can just go ahead and make it this way and we have to bring it to where we want to have it right in somewhere around here that is nice so now we have white background around it which doesn't distort it because we're actually making it to sit on the white background but that is notwithstanding we can clearly go ahead and remove it so go down to effect and we're gonna turn it off from here nicely huh okay we can quickly make sure we copy this and control v to paste it down and we can move it around to this particular part right here and control v to paste again and go ahead and some kind of pick it up from here and move it to the last one here and we can quickly change what we have inside them to fit what we want some kind of you know get here so right here is going to be my gross revenue so i'm going to say gross revenue so here is going to be my gross profit 
so gross profit nicely so we have to get all those right here if we have them some kind of created already so for this is very sure i can just go ahead and take this right here i'm gonna have to deselect it from here then go to the first measure take it off so go to the first measure right here we have a quantity total order sorry total order right here and here is it so just make sure you get to this part and have this turned off quickly go to um this part and turn this off as well so right now we have this we can change how we're gonna have this nicely so we can make sure we use something that is gonna be cool so let us use something like 40. nice nice so we can resize this and we can copy this paste it down once we have it copied control v to paste it oh sorry we still have the previous one paste that, that's gonna be awkward so we just have to make sure we have this copied and have it pasted down and some kind of move it to this part right here and uh, copy and paste it down and uh, we have to move this right here so right now we don't have anything for this so it is time for we to create a merger that's going to help us to calculate the total revenue and the gross profit so right on this data view as you can see we have quantity ordered and we have unit uh, price and we have unit cost right here and right here we have uh, discount applied so how do we deal with this to calculate the total revenue cost of goods sold and gross profit so we have you know it's very simple and easy it's not going to be some kind of complicated like when we have it down in different tables right so where we have to use related table i'm going to come right here right now we have to some kind of calculate that right on our first measure that is what i always do um, those measures right here they are different so we don't have to mix them up here so go to the first measure right here and i'm going to right click i'm going to create a new measure so now that we've seen uh, at the other side how the data look like so we can actually you know get it right here I'm gonna hold my control and use the plus sign to make sure I will it a little bit to get this nicely so I'm gonna start by saying total revenue and uh, how do we calculate that so we're gonna use this function called sum x so let's see what sum x is looking for sum x is looking for table and uh, where is what we want to sum sitting is on the fact table so so here's the fact table so once we've gotten the fact table right here we're gonna see comma and it's looking for the expression expression is what we want to multiply with another thing like that you know uh, it's gonna be our units uh unit price so the unit price is gonna be this so we want to multiply this unit price by quantity ordered so by quantity ordered or ordered quantity can you see that right now that is what it is that you need to do so once we've done that we can go ahead again and say multiply open bracket one minus the discount applied discount applied okay here we go we have the discount applied right here so once we are done i'm gonna have to close it and close my sum x and if i go ahead and hit my enter key right now you're gonna see this so in case you don't understand what we've done right here i'm gonna explain to you but before then let us quickly have the dollar sign you know writing it for number proper number format and you can use any currency type of a chart is like that so let's see what we have i'm, I'm using control and the you click on the plus sign on the keyboard to have this you can see it's going back so you can zoom it closely for we to see what we've done so right here the sum x was able to kind of help us to add different column and multiply them together to have what we want so when i use sum x it's looking for table which i've given it right here and the next thing i did was some kind of giving it the column i want some kind of multiply with an order right here because we have discount 
you know, given when every single customer make purchases. So we want to subtract that discount from the total revenue. We did, you know, multiply by one minus the discount. So we did the same thing when we you calculate in Excel to, you know, have discount removed or, you know, give a discount. So if you understood it from there, you will definitely get what we have done right here. So quickly, we are good to go. So we've gotten our total revenue. That is the gross revenue. Now we have to get for profit. How do we go about this? So remember, if you have to get for profit, you have to calculate the cost of goods sold. Getting back right here again and clicking on the fact table. So we're going to have to scroll. I just want to take this slowly for we to understand what is going on. You know, we have unit cost right here. Unit cost is the cost of every single product by quantity ordered will give us cost of goods sold. And we can now subtract the cost of goods sold from the total revenue generated and we have our gross profit. Hope this is understood. Let's go back and do that in real world. Okay, I'm gonna still build it right here. I wanna select this new measure and we want to go with cost of goods sold like cogs yeah cost of gold sold is equal to some x right some x so it's looking for table i'm gonna type in my fact table right here i'm gonna give it my comma that is expression so we're gonna say quantity that is ordered quantity right here so we want to multiply that by what by costs by unit cost so once we close this and hit our enter key that is all we have to do you get it so gross revenue and gross profit so quickly we have to calculate our gross profit which is very simple and easy so we are subtracting our cost of goods sold from you no know, revenue that is gonna be Oh goodness, we made a mistake. Let's try to get back here. And I'm gonna go ahead and see new measure. Now to calculate the gross profit right now, we're gonna say um revenue. So here we go. We have the total revenue. We don't need the measure name, so we can take it off. It's optional. So you can have it, you can start to take it off uh, from gross profit or cost of goods sold so here we have it cost of goods sold nice all so once you're done you just have to make sure you format it with the dollar sign right here okay so once we are done we can go ahead and make a change of this we want the gross profit right now right here i'm gonna take this off so i'm gonna go with my gross profit this is what it is that we have and i'm gonna come right here gross revenue so we have a total revenue we're gonna pick that up so can you see what it is right now this is what we have as well so let's just try to take uh this particular point from it so we want to have something very shorter i'm gonna click on this right here uh, where we have auto, I want to have zero right there. I'm going to hit my into right now. Let's see what we have if that will solve the problem for us. Okay, we have it solved. I'm going to come right here and have it clicked as well. Come click on this one. Just go right here and put your zero right in. And there you go. We're going to have something like this. So we don't want a very huge number. You have to keep the number, you know, very slim, just like this. So now it gives us what we want. Can you see that right now? Let's just try to visualize the shipping status and see how that goes. Uh, if you remember, in the, in most of my tutorials, I always want you uh, from you know not using this. And right now, I'm going to use it, and you'll be like, "Oh, why are you using it?" So what I did actually see about this kind of chart. If you look at it, uh, this particular donut chart right here, and this particular pie chart. So if you must use it, or if you must use them. You have to be very careful with what you use them with so now what i'm about to use this for right now will not grow in the future to something that will be very close to that and we will not be able to read 
So now if I go right, I'm going to go ahead and put in my total quantity ordered, right? So we just have to locate that right on the first merger. So that is total order right here. So we click on it. So we have a total order. So I'm going to locate where I have my shipping status right in. So we have to see shipping. So we have the shipping status right here. Shipping status. Here we go. Nicely. So this is what we have. So right now it looks very ugly. Nobody would want to read this. So if you must keep this, you must have a wider space for it and have it opened up and for people to get to see what is going on right here. But I have alternative when I want to get this used, I always make sure make sure I can kind of customize it to something very, very big. I'm going to have to like go back to the default I've had before like this. And what I'm going to do right now is this. If I just go ahead and click right here, it's going to open this up for me. So I knew for real that I'm going to have constantly, you know, early shipping, very late shipping and late shipping. So there is no way we're going to have beyond this, like 20 to 30 of it. But if let's say you're actually trying to visualize something that has to do with weekdays, month uh, and, you know, cities right and currently your product is being sold in just three cities and you think like if you take this chart it's gonna work for you so once you expand beyond that three cities and you have to like go into like four five six seven even to ten cities so you're gonna have this particular chart to be very close to that so for that this chart is not an ideal for you to be used so because i knew for real that this is gonna be the limit of how many shipping status i'm gonna have so i can now use this but still i have to customize it how do we do that? Once you have it this way, I'm going to click on this part here and I'm going to turn off the legend. Now I'm trying to keep it clean and it's already going clean. So once that legend is off, I'm going to come right here. I'm going to turn off the title. So quickly, I'm going to go to the effects area here. I'm going to turn off the background. So we have to come back here. Now, data label should be turned off. Now we have something as plain as this. Oh, it might be like, what the heck are you doing? Why would we have something like this? It doesn't really make any sense. Don't worry. It's going to make sense in a GFA. So what we need to do right now is to start to... Let me just get this one from here. I'm going to get it. I'm going to have it copied. Contribute to paste it. And quickly, I have to move it down here and resize it to what I want. So it is time for me to create our own legend ourselves that is going to actually, you know, point to what we have right here nicely. Don't worry, I'm going to have to help you create it in a very simple way that will make this chart to be very readable. So on this one right here, we can decide to type in here, uh, let shipping, let's try, let us use let shipping. So we can change this one to like, let us use something like fourteen and see what we have. Okay, fourteen is cool. We can go ahead and change the color to something like this. So let's see what we have. Okay, it's too you know gray. We just have to go ahead and change something like this. So we can now see the color of what we have right here right now. But before we go ahead, let us see. This color we have right here should be something that has to correlate with the colors on our dashboard. So we don't have to invent a new color. Mm. So how do we go about this? Uh, you can decide to click it. And once you click on it, you come to this part here. You go ahead and see slicer. And now we can see the colors. So right now, if you don't want this color, we have to change the color to something. Let's go with this. Can you see right now? So this blends a lot. So we have to use the same color we have right here for the color of our legends. And uh, we can come right here and quickly go to this particular part. Uh, any of the you know shape will be cool for you. But I'm going to go ahead and use this particular circle. So which I'm going to bring in, resize it nicely for me to get what I want from it. Okay, if this is cool for me, no better. So quickly, we just have to make sure we change the color coming right here. Here is the color. 
I'm going to go ahead and use this color and we have to hover over this to know what it is. This is lead shipping. So here we go. We've gotten what we want. And for the border, we have to turn up the border. So I'm going to have to copy and paste it down. So we have to copy this, paste it down. So we have two of it. So we can now move this right to where we want to have it right here. So I have it. So now we just have to hover over this. This is the early shipping. So for early shipping, we have to make sure we give it the color that some kind of correlate with that. I'm going to go ahead and choose this color for it. And now Ctrl C, Ctrl V to paste. And I'm going to have to take it. I'm going to have it right here. So for the last one now is this color. We have to change it. Uh, we want to go with this color right here which is going to match the color. So we just have to make sure it is right here. And now we have to rearrange this. I'm going to have to go ahead and move this a little bit and I'll put it up right here. So we can copy this, contribute to paste it down if we've just done the copying. So we can move it from there. We can have it right here. So we have to get another one pasted and move it as well. I'm going to move it right here. So remember, before you definitely write anything, make sure you verify what is this. This is early shipping. So we just have to make sure we go right here and say early shipping. So here is going to be our very late shipping. So which is going to be very late shipping. And I'm going to have to move this a bit exactly we have something like this can you see what we've gotten right now so we've just learned how to create our own legend so uh, if you look at it I have a line a thin line right here which this one has gone above so what I'm gonna do right now is to make sure I change it how do I do that it is better to reduce the font size or to move it closer to this one right here Either of the option would work so I think moving it a bit closer to this will be something that will work. I just have to make sure I take it this way. And now to do that is very simple. Make sure you hold and just highlight all of them all together at the same time. I'm going to have to use this and move both move until I have something like this nicely. That is good. So once we've gotten this right now, I can go ahead and just Ctrl C to paste it down, Ctrl V and drop this down, right? And uh, here we go. We have this part right here. What we can do quickly right now is to remove this away. And once we've done that, we want to take our lit shipping. So we have SS, that is SS lit shipping. We have it right here. And this is what we have. We can go right on this part and make sure we some kind of go to call out. And if we don't want to use auto, we can decide to release it from auto and choose it out of it. But I want it to be on auto right now. What we need to do now is just to change this one from 40. Let us go ahead and use 30. So we have something like this. Uh, if this is really too much, we can still reduce it. It's your choice. So we have this right here. Okay, so I'm going to use 25 to start to have something a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go with 25 or I'm going to still go with 20. That is nice. So copy, Ctrl V to paste it down once you've done the copying. So we can move this right here and quickly have them changed. So we can move this right here as well. So next now is to some kind of go for very late shipping. I'm gonna go with this very late shipping and for the early shipping here i want to go with this early shipping okay maybe for the sake of this what i want to do right now is to some kind of go ahead and okay go ahead and some kind of go to this part here is in tarzan you can decide to go ahead and use tarzan instead of you to have it in auto now it shows everything that has to do with that okay in tarzan or we can use none so none will give us this to expose it to like okay this so we can go ahead and click on this and uh, we want to go right here to the call out go here and use none so we do the same studies as well we use none for it go ahead and use none so can you see this right now this is what we have 
So you have a clean legend. The next thing I wanna show you right now is to not to leave this place some kind of blank. It's not gonna look very well right on our dashboard. So we wanna have something right here to, you know, depict shipping to the picked order. So I want to go right to insert and from insert you can see picture or image and I'm going to use this particular shipping card of the thing. So we have to come right here. I'm going to resize it. I'll make it smaller. In the previous video I've shown you how to get those images. So you can go ahead and get those images and use them. Uh, that site is going to give you any image you want to tell. So now you can see this tile right here. You want to choose any of this, fit it on all of that, so you don't have to concern yourself about it. So if it has background, uh, you can turn it off from here and all that. So we're gonna have to leave it this way. So next is for which is some kind of not to some kind of uh, bother doing this from the scratch again. All we have to do is to copy the same thing we have right here right now, or maybe what we want to do is to some kind of right click on it and go ahead and group them together. So once it is grouped, we can decide. Okay. Oh, it is not. It wasn't grouped with this one. Uh, is I'm gonna have to group it with this one, or oh, I can some kind of you know, control C and control V to paste it down. And now it is time to move it. I'm gonna move this to this end. So I want to move the chart as well. Move one of the chart from here. Move it to this particular end as well. So we have this chart. But this picture, no, we want to take it off. So. So instead of we to have um, shipping status right on this one, I'm going to rather have delivery status right here. So make sure you highlight this part here. So it's gonna be delivery status. Can you see it right now? So we're gonna have delivery status right there. So we have to change everything we have right here from let shipping, we're gonna have let delivery instead. And what we can do right now is to some kind of right click and uh, go ahead and ungroup it. So it has been ungrouped. So we can individually go ahead and change them right now and have what we want. All right, behind the scene, we have created some merges where we have DS for delivery status, just like what we had before, SS for, you know, uh, shipping status. So we try as much as we could to create this from the scratch. Um, just like what we've done right here, you've known how to do it before now, just the same thing, which says uh, delivery status, early delivery. We can use the calculate function to filter the order date, you know, with this right here. Simple, you can do it. Okay, now we have some kind of created a legend. So what we have to do right now is to fill in what we have right here. By selecting this, we have to go for the, you know, our early delivery. Just go ahead and select this. Okay, sorry, we have to go for quick delivery. That is not what it is. Quick delivery, we should have, um, so I think um, here we should have quick delivery instead of early. So it should be, quick delivery so we're gonna have uh, here we're gonna have the quick quick delivery as well so once i hit my enter key right now and uh, what's gonna happen let's see what that is so he's asking us to rename this okay i think um okay i'm gonna click on, click on close and i want to add one more dash here to just identify that so we can rectify it so right now we can select our quick delivery right here. So this is the value of the quick delivery um, for the early delivery, right? So uh, the early delivery is our quick delivery. So right now we're going to have to rename this one to the late delivery. So we just have to do that. So come right here. I'm going to select this part. It's going to be our oh late delivery. So select the value area here and uh, we want to go ahead and select this and use the late delivery. I believe you understand what is going on right here. So very late delivery right now is what we want to have. So you can see how I was able to identify them by using the S and else's to make sure I have them identified nicely. This is everything you need to do to have it done. So if you, we go back to the finished one here, right now so we're gonna go right here 
So right here, you can see what we have. We are almost right in it. So we have the same thing. So all we have to do is to some kind of, you know, create this. So which is very simple. So coming right here right now, I'm going to click on this and uh, I'm going to come right here and take shipping status off it. And instead of that, I'm going to just get the delivery status right here, which is this one. I'm going to click on it. So quickly, we just have to make sure we go ahead and change the color for it. Now we have to select where we have the quick delivery right in. Uh, here is the quick delivery right here. So we want to make sure the color matches this one. So quickly go right on this part. Uh, go for slices. I'm going to pick it up. Here we go. We have it. And I'm going to use this. That is cool. So this one is going to be our what? Our very late delivery. The color corresponds and this one is okay. Now we have this. Can you see it now? This is very easy to be read. So no matter how this grows, it's not going to some kind of get close to it and the chart will not be able to be read. So we have it nicely. If we see hover over it, we can have, you know, a tool tip that's still going to give us the percentage and as well the value that we want and all that, which is very, very okay. Can you see what it is right now? This is what you should be doing. So going back to the final one here, this is what we have just exactly.